Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to my Riven guide. Today I'm going to explain everything you need to know about Riven, including her best combos, her best runes, items, uh, my personal favorite skin that makes it seem like she has smoother combos, so I also do recommend you guys to use this as well. Uh, so yeah, enjoy! This room page right here is what I use in volatile matchups. Uh, for example, against Fiora, against Jax, against Set, against Darius, against Camille, all these champions that you're just fighting all the time, like the bruisers and stuff like that. And it just depends if you want to take Alacrity or not. It, it'll depend if the enemy team has a lot of CC or not. You know, if they have like uh, Leona, Nautilus, just champions that stun you and lock you all the time. Uh, and yeah, if they don't have that, you don't take Tenacity, you take Alacrity right here. But if they do have a lot of, you know, CC and stuff like that, you should definitely stick to Tenacity and stick to this page. So, yeah. This page right here is actually my personal favorite uh, because it has a lot of scaling. You go Gathering Storm, you go Ability Haste. Uh, it works really well only if you're against tanks. You only play it if you're against like, you know, Ornn, uh, Scion, Malphite, just matchups like that that are not bruisers. So you take this because you scale for free against them and you're able to just move around the map, do whatever you want uh, with guaranteed scaling because Riven already has really powerful early game. So when you're against tanks, you kind of get free laning phase and you just use that to pick scaling runes and the game is becomes a lot f freer for yourself and obviously right here you go either tenacity or, or lacrity same thing it depends on if they have a lot of cc or not and you can judge that for yourself against the depends on the enemy cop you're against right but usually i take lacrity most of the time because people don't pick much cc nowadays on riven you always want to start longsword three pots uh because you have a lot of sustain you have three pots you can trade however you want uh you can just play the game in your own way, pretty much. Whereas if you buy, let's say, D-Blade, for example, or D-Shield, you only have one pot to use and you can't trade as much. You have to trade a lot more uh, respectfully. So with Longsword 3 pots, you can trade however you want. You can trade HP um, and you'll still be full HP because you can you have 3 pots to help you out. And you get more AD from it. Uh, so it's very highly recommended in every matchup honestly uh on riven i personally don't ever start anything else besides this the core items you want to use on riven uh are gore drinker first of all uh you buy gore drinker not every game and i'll explain to you guys why but most of the time you buy gore drinker when you're against the bruiser matchups and such uh and you don't buy gore drinker when you're against tanks what do you buy instead? You buy Divine Sunder. And Divine helps you shred tanks. It helps a lot uh, with just dealing more damage to them and healing off them. So it de I definitely recommend buying Divine when you're against tanks and Gore Drinker when you're against heavy bruiser matchups. The second item you want to buy when you're against more tankier comps, you want to build a cleaver. Uh, let's say you're against a Scion top or a Poppy. Uh, and a trundle jungle for example this is where you buy first item divine sunder second item black cleaver and then third item you go death dance but let's say you're against for example uh camille topside what do you do you build gore drinker first item and then you go death dance if you're against fiora if you're against camille if you're against all these bruiser champs, you should have these two as your core items. For boots, I personally recommend going Ionian all the time. I think Riven skills best with cooldown and she doesn't really need the tanky stats. She's just naturally tanky because of her E and her E shield that she gets, she gets damage off it. She gets, uh, the more AD you have pretty much, the more the shield is gonna be big, you know? So I do recommend always buying cooldown boots. But yeah, the core two items you need on Riven are Gore Drinker and Death Dance against tanks. Uh, third, we want to buy a Cleaver. Or, depends if they have enough AP damage, if their mid is very fed, 
uh, you buy Ma. Right now, in the game state, these three items are the strongest items uh, for Riven. They are very powerful. You need to buy all of them uh, together, this combination, all three of them. Uh, so if enemy team has like one magic damage dealer or two maybe, it is recommended you buy Ma. You buy Cleaver if uh, they're a little tankier on the tankier side and their AP is like weak. His, you know, he they have a Syndra, he's 0-5, he's not having a good game. They have a Vladimir mid, he's also not having a good game. You don't buy Ma. You drop the Ma and you buy Cleaver. But obviously most of the cases you do want the Ma as your third item. Uh, and then obviously it depends if you go Ma first or Cleaver, you get yourself a Cleaver in there yourself a mon there you got death you got your death dance already your gore drinker or divine sunder depends on what you're playing against and then last item you either want a ga that can help you survive team fights can help you team fight better can help you kill the enemy backline better uh, you can either buy this or if you don't need a ga you can buy yourself a Sereldis. if the enemy champs are hard to chase down uh, let's say if they have a singe they have they're really like they move a lot they're mobile. Uh, this item definitely helps out with uh, that kind of stuff for you to chase them. And they pretty much can't run away from you because this item slows, right? Uh, so it's very useful in that case. But my personal opinion is this item isn't always usable. It's like very rare where you want to use it. So GA is this build looks best. Obviously, you can sell boots at this point of the game. If you're full, ever full items, you can sell boots and buy like tabbies or mercs uh, because you already have a lot of ability haste. So it's just going to depend if enemy team has like, you know, they're one shotting you, you're uh, you can't move. They have a lot of CC. Uh, their mid is fed at this point. Uh, you can sell this, get tabbies. You can sell it, get mercs. You can get whatever you want. Just you'll you'll know when you're in game if uh, whoever's fed and is annoying you that's pretty much it i personally recommend to go full lethality riven if you're against range matchups top lane and range matchups such as vein uh quinn cannon sometimes vladimir uh just overall just champions like that you know champions that poke you down and know you how else are you gonna get on them you need prowler's claw and this item is the only way that would help you get on them, you know. Uh, items like Gore Drinker, they're not going to help with that. They're not going to help with getting on them. And so you go Prowler's Claw, first item. You rush it before boots, before anything. Then once you finish this item, you build your boots. And then you build more Lethality. You build just items that give you movement speed. And Yumu's gives you movement speed that helps you chase them down. Uh, helps you burst them. It just does a lot of damage and you do want to keep building Lethari. You want to commit the, to the full Lethari build. Uh, you'd go Edge of Knights. Uh, you can get a, honestly, you can get a Death Dance in there. Death Dance a lot of times helps out with, you know, beating down the AD heavy comps. So it's pretty good. And then you can finish it off with a GA or uh, even more Lethari. You can finish it off with, let's say, uh, like Sir Pants if you need the pen, if you need the shield break. It just depends. You can choose for yourself. You can even go Cleaver last item. Uh, you can do whatever you want with that. Uh, but usually GA is like the best last item you want to get. Uh, but yeah, you can choose for yourself. And But the first three items is what matters the most. So it's very important you have uh, your Prowlers and your Yubus and your, shoot, your Boots. And that's all you need. Riven's passive makes it so that every time you use an ability, you deal more damage. That's why a lot of times it's best to use Riven passive every time you use an ability like Q, Q, Auto. Uh, usually when I start with E, Auto Q, Auto Q, Auto Q, Auto. You always want to do that to get the full damage, uh, as much damage as possible, pretty much. You want to E, Q, Auto, Q, Auto, Q, just like that. Same thing, E, W, Q, 
just keep using a buddy every time you wanna uh, go in, do whatever it is. Riven skew is your best ability and most important one. You wanna use Riven Q to get to lane faster, to escape, it helps you with pretty much everything. And it deals most damage out of all your kit. You wanna use Riven Q to mostly hop over walls, it helps you escape a lot of situations. Uh, when you're playing aggressively, when you're trying to get to lane, whatever it is, you can jump over walls. Uh, Riven Skew is very useful for that. Riven Skew is very important to get your fast Q combo off. You want to do this. And how to do that is you auto in between every Q that you use. Auto Q, auto Q, auto Q. That's very important for when you want to deal most damage outcome because that stacks up your passive and you get an auto in between every time. Riven's W is an AOE stun that targets as many champions as possible. It has a very small range that you need to make aware of, that you need to make sure uh, enemies are nearby, minions, whatever it is. And it's very important that this ability hits and you're in range for it to hit. Riven's E is a dash that gives you a shield, depending on how much AD you have. A lot of times Riven's E, I believe is made of, uh, so you can set yourself up with the abilities that she has with W, Q, uh, and R. You can animation cancel with E a lot of times. You can animation cancel with ER just like this. It's very hard to spot your alt when that happens. You can ERQ at the same time, just walk fast. So here's the difference with doing that and throwing out an R by itself. That's how slow it is. It gives you a pause timer when you use the R by itself without using E. But when you use E, there is no pause timer. So you're right there, you don't just pause. You keep walking the same way. You just have to use E, R at the same time and then Q right away. It's a very useful combo for when you wanna all in and uh, yeah, just make sure they don't see your alt in there. It's very easy to predict uh, when you're playing against someone. It's easy for them to see their Riven ult. That's why you wanna avoid doing that and you wanna ER at the same time, almost every time. It's the best way possible. Riven's ult has two parts to it. One where you actually activate the ult itself, like that. And the other one is where you throw out the ults. And you usually never wanna throw out your ults unless the enemies are low. It's an execute. The lower they are, the more damage it's gonna do. So you wanna make sure your enemies are low and then you throw out your ult. You never wanna use it when they're high HP. Best way to make use of Riven's passive is auto Q, auto Q, auto Q. You usually wanna do this combo just to get more attack speed in there, attack damage. Uh, and yes, I said attack speed because you auto them faster if you're canceling autos like that. If you see, this is your normal auto range. And this is what happens when you auto Q, auto Q. You're autoing a lot faster than how you usually would. Second combo I like to use is the E, W, Q, auto Q, auto Q. And this is how you do the combo. That combo does more damage at a one-shot pace. If you wanna one-shot them, you can do this combo. Uh, it's one of the better combos if you're in a very like fast battle, uh, if you're both half HP and you need to get down the damage as fast as possible. This combo right here does it best. You can also use the EWQ combo uh, when you wanna flash on people. You can E flash WQ, like this example right here. I very highly recommend you use the Dawnbringer Riven skin. 
this skin feels the smoothest on Riven. Uh, the combos feel very clean and it's my favorite skin. It looks best honestly. I recommend this as my number one skin. For number two, I would recommend the Championship Riven 2016 edition. This is also uh, one of my favorites. It feels very smooth, obviously not smoother than that Dawnbringer, but still feels smooth. So I recommend this. And the third one would be the Dragon Blade Ribbon. Dragon Blade looks very nice. It's one of the best looking ribbon skins. And the comboing does seem a little weird at first, but once you get used to this, it becomes very nice and clean to use. You'll feel it. Whenever you're playing Riven, you want to use your level 1 very precisely. And by that, I mean Riven's level 1 is very, very strong. And you should make use of it by charging your third Q and hitting the enemy team with it. Level 1. And why do you do that? It's because you proc their poem plating. A lot of times, everyone against Riven takes Resolve. And almost every time you see them having Resolve, that means they have bone plating. And most of the time, you can't fight them if they have bone plating. So you want to charge your third Q to proc it, and then you look for an all-in. A lot of times on Riven, when you're able to third wave crash, slow push the wave, stack a wave under enemy tower, have them catch it, you can just walk into the enemy jungle, place a ward, do whatever you want. You can find the enemy jungle, uh, you can mess with them. You, know, you don't have to stay in lane all the time. Uh, you can walk around uh, after you push the lane and just find your opponent. It'll help you a lot not die to ganks and it'll make your lane a lot easier, obviously. Killing their jungler, right? The way you want to team fight on Riven is by most of the time just holding your third Q and using it to E, third Q, flash ulti on your opponents. In cases where you don't have flash, you want to charge up your Q, make it to 3rd Q, and get as close to your enemies as possible using the charge 3rd Q. That way, you'll have your 3rd Q will be back up again, and you can use it to engage pretty much just like having flash. Uh, just the range is a little lower than that. This is an example of using Ribbon's very powerful level 1 to take a fight that I knew I'd win. I charge my Q, have it 3rd Q, get a Conqueror stack, and then I start fighting him again. Even though he didn't have bone plating, I still knew I was going to win this because I got uh, my 3rd Q off and got a free Conqueror stack off of it. This is an example of me waiting in the bush level 1 right as minions are about to hit the wave and charging my Q and waiting for Renekton to walk up on the wave a little. And then we proc his bone plating and then we wait a bit for my Q to come back up and then we walk back in and we look for a very nice trade. Here's a good example of the EQW combo that I do on Renekton here. I'm just able to solo dive him like that because he didn't have time to react to flashing out because of the combo. Uh, I was able to one shot him before he can react to flash. Uh, so he didn't bother doing anything honestly. Uh, he just stayed there and died because there's nothing you can do about this combo. A lot of times the best way to determine if you want to keep splitting or team fight with your team is by just knowing your role and what your role is for your team. Like what do they need you to do? Uh, are they very far behind uh, where you can never group with them and just like you can't help them out? Or do you feel like you're strong enough to give them a lead and help them out and group with them, team fight with them? For example, if you have like a Lulu on your team, uh, can she back you up? Can she shield you? Help you team fight? Help you carry the fight? Uh, or if you don't have anyone that helps you set up and all your team is weak, then just keep splitting. There's nothing you can do about it. Uh, you can create your own advantages split pushing and you can apply them later just by applying them in side lane by you splitting and being a side lane threat. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, please let me know in the comments what this video did to help you out.